Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It is the founder of Style for Substance, and her name is Susan. Have you ever wondered, like you looked in the mirror, you put on an outfit, and it just doesn't look right? You know, sometimes the color might not be looking good on you, and Or, you know, and you, you think it's the outfit, but maybe it's because your hair doesn't really coordinate with the color of the outfit, or maybe it's your skin tone. You know, what colors really go best with us? What makes us pop? What makes us define who we are? And what makes us really look good and make us feel good when we look in the mirror? Well, Susan has created an app and she's created different tools and techniques and she has a lot of great tips to share about finding the right colors for yourself. The clothes and the colors and the makeup and the things for your hair that make you look the hottest and the best and the sexiest. So here she is, Susan, and she's going to tell you a little about herself and her app. And she's going to provide you with different tips and ideas for your hair for your skin, for your makeup, for your clothes, and everything you need to know so you can look your best. Hi, Susan. Hi, Stacey. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, you're very welcome. I'd love to hear more a little about yourself, and I'd love to hear about this app and the wonderful things it could do. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So um, my name is Susan Janesco, and um, I am the founder of Style for Substance, as you mentioned. And we just actually just today uh, launched a, what we're calling Color, C-O-L-Y-R, which is a kit that helps people determine their best colors. So basically, there's a there's a little device. It's an incredibly accurate professional grade colorimeter and it, it allows you to take measurements of colors. So you start by taking measurements of your skin and your hair color and then the app has a patent pending um, technology that allows for creation of a numerical color palette. And that numerical color palette then allows you to scan whatever you'd like. So you can scan your clothes, you can scan accessories, in some cases makeup works, and then you can get a really clear objective yes or no on those items, whether or not they're going to work for your coloration. So this has been a long time coming. I've, I've been working on this since 2015 wow. and we, we soft launched about a year ago got a ton of feedback to make sure it was as user-friendly as possible and some really wonderful ideas for where to go with updates for the app as well. So we have several new updates that are planned for the rest of this year. And then we have base functionality and then we're going to put those updates in hopefully before Christmas here. So that would be available to folks. And then after that, at the beginning of um, 2025, we're going to add a few additional things. So that's what I've been working on. So what gave you this idea and what motivated you to want to make an app? Sure. Yeah. So I have actually been, I've, I've struggled with in this space my, my entire life. And I had gotten the services of several very, very expensive personal stylists. And what I found was a lot of like, yeah, that's, 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 I like that. But then they didn't agree with each other. And I got, you know, I used several apps. I used some online sources. And what I was finding is that it just, it wasn't built for me as a customer. It was a lot of, there's a lot of subjectivity involved as well. A lot of like my opinion is. And yeah. it, there was a real lack of consistency and it didn't feel like I was getting to a place where I was learning how to fish on my own. Yeah. And I was getting very, very frustrated by that process. And in fact, one of the things that kind of the straw that broke the camel's back was I had gotten some feedback from a personal stylist. I, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, and the feedback was to get rid of a whole section of clothes from my closet. There were things that, you know, I kind of liked, but, you know, I, I was going to take her word for it, got rid of the clothes. And then the environment is just so that that everyone is incentivized to sell you things. So she yeah. actually sent me a bunch of sponsored links. And in a couple of cases to rebuy the exact same clothes that I had just gotten rid of. Mm. And I just realized like this is, first of all, when you're getting paid, you know, as it, it's several hundred dollars an hour to do this, yeah. uh, you really should, you know, it, it should be independent. <laughs> that, yeah. You know, you know, the conflicts of interest there really bothered me. Right. And then also there was, there was really no consistency. And I felt like with my kind of science background, I thought we can, we can do better here. Yeah. This is an industry that's absolutely ripe for disruption. 
we can do better. Right. And so just did a lot of training and looking at color science and seeing what options were out there in a whole variety of spaces and, and was able to kind of narrow down on a color system that's called Munsell. And it's it uses a hue value a chroma framework. So three dimensions of color. Yeah. And that was, it was developed in the early 1900s. And it's actually what all modern color systems are built upon. So that's really what, what the foundation of it is. And then we just take one or more aspects of that uh, color system and modify them or to give people a full or more full palette that they can work with. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. I love that. And so it really, it, it's a text, like you could tell it by your hair color and your eye color, and it looks at all different aspects, your skin, your tone, everything. Yeah. So we can't do eyes because eyes are actually the, it, the, the reading that it gives. You can't put the device in your eyes. Yeah. So now somebody is really excited about their eye color. And I, I understand that some people are just very excited or very, you know, like my eyes are blue, like, you know, I would say, first of all, that there is frequently people do not see your eye color, right? Yeah. Unless you're pretty close to you, you actually yeah. can't see what, what color somebody's eyes are. Right. And even if mine are like a pretty light blue, like you you, you probably can't tell that right now. I couldn't tell you your, your blues or eye, your eyes are blue. No. That's right. So the, what, what if you're talking about like visual space, for most people, that's going to be skin. And then the as kind of a secondary one is usually hair. Now, mm -hmm. if somebody's very excited about their eye color, and that's fine. Maybe they're going to be in close proximity to others. And, you know, it, it's it's a part of them. Mm -hmm. What I tell them is that they can use the paint store method. Mm -hmm. And it's just that you go to a paint store and you, you know, they have all those little color swatches. Yeah. You can actually hold them up to your eyes um, and, and take a look. And then grab some that look pretty close and their, their lighting usually isn't wonderful. And then go back out in better lighting and find the one that's closest to your eye color. And you can actually take the device and you can scan that. And then we have a feature on the device that's actually match two colors. So you can add your eye color in and then match a color to it. Usually I would tell people because your eyes are such a small amount of space, yeah, you really save that. For like, I have a really cool um, necklace that has a, a, a bright green stone on it or something, you know, like a part of a scarf and it's, yeah. it's part of a pattern or, you know, what, so it's a smaller piece of what your outfit is. Otherwise, it's going to look a little bit, it can look a little bit awkward. Yeah. Um, a, a large amount of a color that when somebody's seeing you from 10 feet away, they, they don't see where the, the connection comes in. I've noticed too, like when you put col colors on, certain colors will bring out your eye color. And sometimes it will make your eye color look different. You know, there are people with hazel eyes that sometimes if they wear more blue, their hazel looks blue, you know, and then vice versa. If they're wearing a green shirt, sometimes their hazel will turn like they look like they have green eyes. Yeah. So that's actually a really interesting concept in color. So when you put two colors together, they actually change how the other one looks. Mm -hmm. And so when I was putting together my color guides for, for I'd initially done like a, a very manual process for when I, when I, and I was doing these, these 10 page long, highly customized color guides for people. And it's, yeah. it was, all manual. and when, I, when I was designing the color guides, this is one of the things that I saw. So usually if you're going to use a color, so a couple things here, if you're going to put a color and you just want to evaluate it, mm -hmm. you want to have it on a neutral gray background. Okay. You, you know, like a, a medium gray background, because if you have it on black or white, mm -hmm. it's going to change how that color looks. And this is, okay. this is a really Makes interesting sense. concept. So when I was creating the guide, when, when I put all the color swatches yes. on a white background, it actually makes all the colors look um, more gray. Yes. It takes out some of the, the intensity of the color and it kind of grays it down. Right. If I put it on a black background, all of a sudden those colors looked more intense. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it made them pop more. Yeah. And that's, it, it was really very, in, even when you were doing colors that worked with each other, right. and you were doing like strips of them together, putting them side by side. Yeah. Just changing the, the lightness or darkness of what was next to it, the intensity of the color that was next to it can, can change how your skin color looks pretty dramatically. Um, and I could see that right there on the page. So yeah, I'm truly, I, I absolutely um, see that in practice when, when you change up the colors that you're wearing, it can really affect how, how other colors look, how your skin and hair looks.
And I bet you people don't even realize that because like even when I was working on a digital project, I put like white in the background of a font and it changed the font completely. And then when I put black in the background, it was completely different. Like, you know, it, 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 the color like changed dramatically and it was just same solid color. It was just that you put the black or the white underneath that color and it, it changed the color of the font and it was like two different worlds black and white it was like you know one turned to like bright pink and the other one turned to like a cold, totally different color and all because of the color and back of the actual color Yeah, actually, this is a, it's an area that I don't think, I think in the past, uh, people used to get a better education in color, mm or -hmm. at least that was, you know, it was a little bit more integrated, but now I don't think people really, because I didn't even, when I started this, I didn't even know what color dark yellow was, Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and what that even looked like. And so there's a lot of color education that I think is not a part in the vocabulary of it as well. Yeah. It's just not part of everyday life. And I'm not talking about being able to name a thousand different colors because Yeah. that's not efficient. It's not an efficient way of, of going about business is like, this is canary red and this is this. And that, because people actually see differently, they, it, it's, you really need a, a numerical system in order Yeah. to be able to classify and talk about color in a way that, you know, is going to be consistent across settings. No, I agree completely. I, you know, I, I find it really interesting and this could probably, you know, like something like this could probably help with a lot of different things. Cause even de de deciding what color shoes you want to wear and what, you know, what would look best, you know, cause people, people have such a hard time when it co comes to picking out the right clothes for themselves. A lot of times people just look at patterns or they look at the, the shirt and, and they don't really You know, they'll, they'll buy a lot of people won't even try clothes on and see how it looks. They'll buy it or now because like online shopping is so big, they buy it and they have, you know, and just because it looks pretty on the screen, you know, and then they get it and they put it on and it's nothing what they anticipated. And, and you know, I think a lot of it is because, like you said, they don't you, you know, we don't know sometimes what colors um will look the best on us. We just assume, you know, we might know a couple of colors, but we don't realize, you know, there could be a cluster of colors that would really make us, you know, pop and make us look more, you know, like, more, I guess, eye popping, you know, in a sense. Yeah. And I think the way to think about it is, you know, it's, it's putting a frame around you, Mm right? hmm So it's, you're putting a frame around you. What kind of frame do you want? You know, and Yeah. just because, it, and I, I think this is a really important concept because I think frequently you see uh, online, you see two different, one is the, here are your, your, what do they call them? Neutrals, which I, it, they're not really truly neutrals. Neutrals Mm -hmm. are you know, from black to white and all the grays in between, Yeah. but they get all sorts of different colors, neutrals. And they'll say, these are neutrals. Everyone should have neutrals in their closet. Yes. Well, not exactly. Right. Like, and, Mm and -hmm. a lot of times black and white don't work for the same person. Yes. Um, so that's, that's an interesting thing to kind of keep in mind though. You see all of those colors in a, a, you know, wardrobe basics, you know, if you're Yeah. going to, you see that all over. And then I think the other, you know, sort of extreme of that is I'm going to wear whatever I like. And what I would say to that is that just because you enjoy a color, you enjoy looking at it out in the Yeah. wild does not necessarily mean that that color is going to flatter you when you put it on your body. Yes. Also, what, even if there's a color that you don't like, and I have a very good example, I had a, a kind of a peach green color, pea green color that Yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's so ugly. I would never. And I tried one on because it was in my palette. And I thought, you know what, fine, like, what, a, but when it looks good on you, even if you didn't like the color before, it's amazing Yeah. how your opinion can change when something's actually really flattering on you. Yes. So I just, I, I, I try to tell people kind of keep an open mind because you don't know until you try it on your body and you see it, you Yeah. know, with your skin and your hair, whether or not that color is good for you, no matter whether you like that color out in the wild, most of the time you don't even have to see yourself. <laughs> and, Yeah. but, but I'll tell you, like, even I, even my kind of walking around the house type of clothes, Yeah. I've, I've started like. as, as the opportunity has come up, I've moved aside the things that aren't flattering and gotten rid of them and, and moved more to things that are. Yeah. And it was when you, when you walk past a mirror in your own home, it makes a difference. It does It make makes a difference. a difference. If you look good, even if like, I don't usually wear makeup, I don't, you, you, but 
it's just like that, that second that you see yourself and you're like, ah, all right. And then you, you go about your business. It right. doesn't have to be a big thing, but it's a little, it's it kind of a little pick me up when, when, you know, you've, you've taken the time to make sure that you've, you've created the best frame for yourself possible. Exactly. And I've noticed too, also certain colors can make you look heavier and certain colors could actually make you look thinner. I've worn certain colors and I don't look flatter in them. I actually look heavier and, you know, parts of my body look wider and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like, did I put some weight on? And then I'll change and I'll put a different color on. And then I'll see, like, I'll look thinner. And those, those, those parts of my body that I thought were like bigger now don't look as big, you know, and it's, it's crazy, but it's like your shape, your, your size could actually look so much different according to the colors you wear. Yeah. That's generally a result of where the light is going. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's either lighter clothing or it's things that catch light. So yeah. if you're wearing like a shiny, like a glossy color or a glossy fabric, that's also something that can, can result in that. So if, you know, you really want to emphasize your waistline, you know, you get a, a glossy belt yeah. and that's a nice way of doing it is to bring, you know, the attention. So even if it's black, like it will bring attention to itself if, right. you know, if it's glossy. So, yeah, I think there are a few things that can kind of help with that. But yeah, I, I generally find that the lighter the color I'm wearing, um, the, the more sort of the eye is drawn there. And so you want to be a little bit careful if it's something you're really just not pleased with about your body right. um, and just to, to sort of use it strategically in that way. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And you were saying something really good too, before the show, you were mentioning that you had a friend or you knew somebody and that person liked all the princess colors, you know, and when they got their, their color palette back, it was all the colors that would really look good with them were not on, you know, were not the colors that she really liked, you know? So, so she was, you know, she liked more of the princessy look and she got totally different, you know, colors. And I think that happens a lot. I think people, because, you know, we all have favorite colors, but not all those, you know, and sometimes we tend to buy because the colors, you know, they catch our eye because they're, they're our favorite colors, whether they're pink or purple or orange, you know, there are certain colors that people just like cling to, but then, you, if you buy those colors because you kind of just love the colors, not, they're not necessarily going to do justice to you as a person and the way you look. Yeah, I would say that that's one of the more common things I see is that people really like these kind of really intense sort of Crayola colors. Mm -hmm. And that was that was the issue there is she really, you know, and Disney that like the, the whole thing was Disney, right? And Disney draw you have to recognize Disney draws their characters and they color them in a particular way. Yeah. Right. You know, they have very oddly shaped bodies in a lot of cases, right? Yeah. And then also the coloration, if you look closely, like mm -hmm. it's it's blonde, but it's not like normal human blonde. Right. It's really, really intensely yellow blonde. Yeah. Or it's really, really intensely red, red, or you right. know, orange, I guess. And so you have to be looking at those things. And sometimes, you know, you'll see a, a, a black, but it's blue. You know, like there are all sorts of things that they do with color in that space. Yeah. You know, very, very pale skin or, you know, different things, which allows for them to put different clothing on those princesses. Yeah. And it looks good on them. Right. But you are not like natural human coloring doesn't look like that. And so those colors are, you know, you can dye your hair, I suppose, to get it to that space. And then, yeah, yeah right. Like if you put on really bright lipstick, often you can pull off something that has, that is really, um, really an intensely colored yeah. something that you went to, you know, a shirt, a top, whatever that you wouldn't otherwise be able to wear. You can, you're kind of creating a connection point for it. Yeah. But yeah, so that was kind of the issue with her. And I tried to, you know, help her through that. Okay, fine. If you want to wear the Disney dresses, that's okay. Make sure your lip color, make sure yeah. your makeup is done. But what I don't like is when, when image consultants or, or stylists tell people that they must wear makeup in order to look good. Yeah. So give them clothes that then require them to put on a full face in order to leave the house because otherwise they look so washed out yeah. by that really intense color that they're wearing. Yeah. And certainly like I, I grew up 
you know, in the eighties and there's color me beautiful. And, and yeah. I want to be a winter so badly, mm -hmm. so badly. But when I put on those colors, I look terrible, yeah. just terrible. And that's not because I'm a fall. It's because, you know, my everything in me is not like, it's not highly what chromatic, which is like, it's not intensely colored. Yeah. It's, it just cannot pull off those colors. And so, and I don't wear makeup generally. Yeah. So really limited when, you know, like the utility of those colors for me. And it really wasn't flattering. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I was probably 30 the first time I tried something on and I thought, oh my goodness, my skin is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I grew up thinking I just had ugly skin because it's very yellow. And so I just thought, well, you know, like I lost the lottery on that one. It's just mm -hmm. too bad. And to see the difference between colors that work for you and don't yeah. is actually pretty profound. And if you've never seen something and thought that about your skin tone, yeah, I would encourage you to keep looking because it is out there. There right. is a color out there for you. And I was so, I had given up so much on this that I was just buying discount rack, like made well $5 t-shirts. Yeah. And it just so happened that one of them worked. Right. And you know, and, and now since I've found even better colors for me, but it, it just, I needed something to tell me that there was a better way of doing this. Right. And just what I felt once I found it. What do you think about the seasonal colors? Like I, a lot of times, like it's, it's funny that we, we go by this trend, but like, you know, during the seasons, we're supposed to change colors, but then like, let's say Florida is always warm. Yeah. They're always wearing bright colors in Florida because of the weather, you know, but then you go to states like New York and, you know, states that have the fall and the winter seasons and, you know, they, they change colors, but have you come across where sometimes those fall and winter colors may not do justice for some people? And what do you think about, you know, the concept of changing colors during the seasons? Is it meant for everybody? Do we really have to follow it if we don't want to? Because we might have a color that really looks outstanding on us, but it might not be a quote unquote fall or winter color. And, you know, now we're entering the, the fall and winter seasons, you know. So do we have to change or can we go outside with a bright colored, you know, pair of leggings with flowers on them, you know, have summer colors and we're in New York, let's say, and, you know, we're supposed to be wearing fall and I'm wearing like aqua and pink, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the, I, the, the, yes, absolutely. You do you. Right. But I do think there's, there are ways of playing in that space. Right. So generally for myself, I'll speak for myself first. In the summer, I tend to wear lighter colors and that's a practical consideration. Mm -hmm. It gets hot here. Yeah. And so I generally go on the lighter side of the spectrum. Right. Um, having said that though, um, so I generally go lighter and I generally add some more color within my palettes as well. Yeah. Uh, in the winter, I tend to do a little bit darker within my palette. Um, and I also tend to, I narrow a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I go a little bit more towards my skin color. Um, but the, the interesting thing about that is that when you, so a couple of things, one, if you, the most important thing you're going to wear is what's closest to your face. Yeah. So if you can get the top, right, then the bottom just needs to work with the top. Right. So if you want to wear, you know, something on the top that works really well for you, you can go lighter on the bottom or darker on the bottom. And right. Just, you know, to kind of work with the season, whatever's kind of happening in the the, the general, um, you know, the environment. Yeah. And I think that that is good. It, it's, it, it does play a little bit better with sort of, you know, what's the fashion and whatever um, is happening. But, you know, so there are practical considerations there. You, however, can wear what makes you feel good. Yeah. And I think that if you're wearing clothes that flatter you, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't you're not so tied to a season because it's always going to look good on you. Right. It just might it might feel a little discordant with, you know, what you're seeing out there, you know, other people wearing and different things, but yeah. you know, I mean, when something is flattering, it's really hard to take take that out of, you know, as long as you're dressed appropriately for the weather, like it's really hard to to pull that apart and say yeah. like, no, that's not fall enough. Yeah. 
Um, there are certain colors and different ways of dressing that, you know, just seem more appropriate based on, you know, the temperature and the season, but no, yeah. certainly not. Like I, I definitely, I have lighter colored clothes that I still wear in the winter and they're flattering on me no matter what the season is. So right. I don't worry about it so much. I also noticed too, and I even noticed it on myself and I don't know if other women notice it, but we really have to change the colors of our makeup depending on the, on the seasons too. And, you know, we might get used to certain colors that we like to wear because they look good on us. But like, I'll give an example. Before I go in the sun, I have ghost white skin. So my, my foundation is like light, you know, and then when I can go in the sun one day and I turn olive because of my father's Greekness in him. So once I go into the sun and my, my skin color changes, if I put that light foundation on, I look like a ghost. Like it like looks horrible on me. So it's like, you know, so what about the foundation, the eyeshadows, the lipstick? So that's actually, and that's a great point. And I'll bring that, start with clothes there as well, because I have noticed, when, you know, now using, you know, this, this system, right? This app. Yeah. And you see the number, one of the things I've done for people is I give them the actual numbers as well. I haven't just said like, that's a bad choice. Yeah. I give you the ability to see the numbers too. So you can, you can do a little bit of customization as well. And one of the things that I've noticed is that for me personally in the summer, and I would say that this is relatively common, I get more red and I get darker. So right. the lightness goes, goes um, I, I get, you know, I'm, I'm darker skinned and as well as having my skin gets a little bit on the redder side. So I'm generally very yellow, mm -hmm. um, orange, but on the, the very yellow side of it and yeah. it moves to, you know, kind of a, a redder orange. So I actually tweak things in the summer and there are clothes that I have and colors that I have. Like, this is a good example. Yeah. Like this is pretty good for me in the summer and the, the right. you know, when, when summer is at its peak in the winter, I put that on and it's kind of like, ah, yeah, it, it gets to the end of like what I can wear. And so there are examples like that where I shift my wardrobe a little bit. Like this is a little bit more yellow than I've been wearing all summer. And I'm getting into where my skin is lighting up. And then this is a better and better choice for me. Same. Well, the opposite is true for my hair. So my hair will also, you know, my hair lightens. Yeah. So the contrast level too of what I'm wearing changes in the summer. I don't wear things that are as highly contrasted as things that I wear in the winter, because in the winter I can get away with higher contrast because yeah. my, skin and my hair are, there's a pretty big difference there. I mean, I'm going gray, so not for long, but you know, for right now, there's a bigger contrast there. Yeah. And in, in the summer, the contrast narrows. And so what I'm wearing, I, I never wear black and white unless it's a very small pattern because then right. your eye makes it into a kind of a gray, mm -hmm. but I, I would, the contrast level of the, the patterns that I wear and the clothes that I wear goes down then in the summer to kind right. of compensate for my contrast, contrast going down. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to makeup and things, yeah, absolutely. My, I, the first thing I think is the most important is just getting the color right. And right. By that, I mean the, so I, I usually, if I'm going to wear, I usually do eyes. And so w when I was putting on eye makeup in the past, I was often going for like bronzy shades and things like that. Yeah. And what I found now taking these measurements is that I needed to go a lot more yellow. Yeah. And when I'm going to do my eyes, I get a, a version of yellow that's darker, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, to create shadow. And then I have a version that's lighter yeah. and that, you know, will bring, you know, a little bit of more light there. Right. And that's generally, if I'm looking for a natural look, like that's as far as I'll go. Yeah. Um, I, I am looking for something that's just sort of enhancing what's already there. But yeah, absolutely. If you're doing foundation, if you're doing things like that, it, you have to pay attention to what your skin is doing in the season, right. or it's going to look very awkward on your face, on your neck. It's just not going to fit in. And then you'll notice too, like there are parts of your face that, you know, get very tan, some parts that don't. And again, we see this in the measurements for people. Yeah. It's, it, there is a lot of variability even in right. a single face. So yeah, I would, I would highly recommend that somebody take a look at those things by season and, you know, kind of adjust accordingly because right. what's good on you in the summer. And that would be the one caveat to the earlier point about, you can wear whatever you want all year. It might not look so good on you in the winter, depending right. on what you in here do. I was also thinking too, when you were talking that the palette, like it's the app 
it could actually help you pick out the, the best jewelry to wear too. Because even if something matches and the color coordinates, it might not be a color on the app that says, you know, this will look the best on you. Where if you look on the, on the color app and you see, you know, something, let's say I'm wearing pink and you see something that matches pink on the color app, but I was looking at a different colored piece of jewelry. It might be better if I have something, you know, in that color app to wear that because it might actually make me kind of, you know, pop a little bit more if I stick within my color palette. palette. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that's going next to your face, I would pay a lot of attention to. So I, you know, especially you can take even something that doesn't generally work for you. If you have like a nice statement necklace or a, um, a scarf or, you know, like some, some big sort of like attention grabbing earrings, you know, just something, whatever you do, you can save some things that maybe aren't your best colors, but yeah. that, you know, like they're still an important part of your wardrobe for one reason or another, you know, like you want to keep them. Yeah. You can usually, you can usually make up a lot of ground just by putting something that's really flattering next to your face. Right. So I say that jewelry is particularly important. Now, you know, I have a watch that's black and white, still wear it. Don't have any problems with that. Yeah. It's not, you know, it, it it's far enough away on my body that that doesn't bother me at all. Like I'll right. wear shoes that don't necessarily, but they go with another part of my outfit. Like I'm making a coordinated outfit. Yeah. What's closest to my face is always going to look right for me. It's always going to be flattering. And yeah. as you move further down my body, then, you know, we can play a little bit more with color, different colors. Right. And I feel like people can't really, they pay attention to your face and what's around your face the most. So it's like, you know, and then they start to look, you know, they'll scroll down, but like the first thing that's going to attract them is your face and the surrounding areas of your face. Yeah. I just see a lot of people who do the exact opposite though. Like they, they'll plan their, oh, yeah. on their shoes or they'll pick a pair of pants and then they'll try, you know what I mean? And if that yeah. doesn't really make it because really you're trying to flatter your face. Yeah. This where you're communicating with people. This is where you're trying, you know, this is where the attention really should be. Yeah. And certainly I've had days where this is the last place I want the attention, <laughs> but, you know, for the most part, like that's really what you you're generally trying to do. Now, if you're yeah. a model and you're trying to show, and this is why you generally see a lot of clothes on a runway or on models and they're very brightly colored or you have black and white or things like that. It's because those people are trying to show off the clothes. Yeah. They're the girl look good. They're trying to show off the clothes. And so you see these ridiculous colors and whatever. And it's like, it's really eye catching. It can look really beautiful. But the, yeah. the idea is there, are you seeing the model? Is it flattering her? Or are you seeing the, the clothes? They're the art. She's yeah. the, you know, so that's, you're really, they're trying to draw attention and it's important to keep in mind. But yeah, so I, I, I um, and I, I think that it is, particularly important that you dress from the top down because mm -hmm. if you dress from the bottom up it's very easy to get attached to something that's on the bottom right and if you're trying to match an outfit going up you might end up with something on the top that isn't going to flatter the most important part of right. what you're trying to flatter a hundred percent a hundred percent now where can people find your app Oh, sure. So the, you can go, it's actually on Amazon. It's on Walmart. If folks oh, want to wow. go there, they're welcome to, but you can also go to our website. It's findmycolors.com. And that gives you some good background about how the thing works. And so basically what happens is if somebody were to purchase, you get a little kit, it includes a colorimeter, a little baggie, and it includes a pretty comprehensive guide. So the guide goes through a whole bunch of, it goes through some background on color, Essentially, what I wanted to differentiate was there are a lot of color systems out there that are, they're basically just, they're built on sand. Yeah. And there's no foundation. There's no real true foundation or scientific basis. It's, it's a lot of subjectivity. So I wanted to contrast this. You're going to understand if you, if you want to, you can understand exactly where this comes from, exactly right. why these colors work for you. Why, why you might want to take it a step further and say, well, like, well, there are other ways I could think of some harmonies and that's fine too. Once you have the basic structure in place, you can play with it. Yeah. This at least gives you a basic understanding of why we're doing what we're doing here and why it should work for you consistently. Yeah. Now you might decide you don't like a color, even if it, you know, theoretically does look good on you. Yeah. 
least you have a structure to build from. Right. And so that's what it's a it's a pretty good comprehensive guide talk, talking you through how kind of color works, how color harmony works, and then taking you into like, this is how the app works. And here's how you can play. This is what we do with the numbers. Yeah. You can always take it a step further or do something a little bit different with it from there. So right. that that's essentially what we have there. And then you go onto the app store. So it works on um, it works on Google Play as well as you know, the Apple um, app store, you can go on there and you just download the color app and you get a month free with the kit, and then you can play. So right now we have two functions. We have the first function is you take your skin and hair color, and then it will tell you whether the color that you're scanning is a good match for those colors. And it will tell you, you know, so that's, you know, it, it's important. It'll just give you a really yeah. simple to, to understand, like, um, you know, uh, smiley face, right? Like right. It, it'll tell you right away, like, this is what it is. This is how it matches or doesn't. And, and then you, you move on from there. There is also a function that's just match two colors. And with that, you can match any two colors. So you can take, once you've decided on your top, you can, you can pick your bottoms right. by using that second functionality. Now I will say there are a couple other things you can do with this that I think are kind of fun. You can actually use this for home and decor. Oh so yeah. If you want to pick out paint color you want to pick up so generally what the, the foundation of all this is you have fixed colors yeah so in when you're talking about you know like personal color it's going to be your hair and your skin are relatively fixed colors so that's what we build from right home you might have something that's going to stay right like maybe you have countertops that you're right. not gonna have. well you can always change out the paint or mm -hmm. you can you know whatever you're thinking about changing you take something that's not going to change that you want to kind of you know build around yeah. You take a scan of that and then you can, you can test paint swatches for the right. walls, you can test a whole bunch of, you know, so you have um, another tool to even like help with uh, home and decor issues. Makeup is a little bit interesting. It can be a little bit tricky to measure because yeah. it's sometimes not a flat surface. And also makeup isn't always opaque. So if you have a, a, a you can put the makeup down on your skin and it's your skin color is going to show through. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you do have a little bit more room to play because your skin color is always kind of uh, in behind right. it, the, the makeup itself. So yeah, a few different places that you can play with this. And then coming up, one of the, the feedback that we got, we had some really good advice. So in the next couple of months, you're going to see some functionality on there that if something says it's not a good choice for you, well, then... I, I, we, we got feedback. Well, like, what do I do? Or is, is blue just never going to work for me? Yeah. So we've actually, we're putting in functionality that allows people to see right there on the screen. Here are some blue. Now that blue might not work, but here are some blues that, that probably will. Yeah. And, you know, so, so giving people some options right there, helping people to build an outfit. So once they pick the first color that goes with their hair and their skin yeah. and to, to build out an outfit. So there's some functionality to like build out an outfit and pick a second color where that first color is kind of already loaded in and then you're just measuring things against the first color. Um, so some different things like that. And then we're going to, we're going to be adding a, uh, like a shopping list feature and allow you to measure your closet if you want to do that and find clothes that work with other things in your closet. So we have a lot of things that are, that are coming up and I'm, I'm pretty excited for them. That's awesome. And, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking too, this could probably help you with nail color too. So, yeah. you know, yeah. if you're, you're, you know, cause sometimes you go into a nail salon and you're overwhelmed with all the colors they have to offer. And sometimes we pick colors and they don't look as great, you know, like they, they looked really pretty in the bottle and they looked, you know, nice when they were like starting to paint it. But then overall, after it was done, then you look and it's like, I don't know it doesn't you know it didn't it, does, it looked much better but you know when they were putting it on and now I'm looking at it as a whole and finished and you know and I guess it you know you, it would be able to tell us like you know a, a list of different colors that would really look good if we went to a nail salon and pick different colors for our nails yeah so there will be there's also going to be a feature that just lists and it's never going to tell you all the colors that look great on you yeah. but you know just giving you a selection so that you can see like here's you know there's a blue there's a green there's a pink there's a you know so it goes through all of them and so yeah that's actually one of the things um that so to I, i'm probably going to end up when all is said and done with four different colors of nail polish and one is going to be a red that's good for my skin and one's going to be kind of more of like a 
uh, reddish purple. So kind of more, that's good for my skin. Right. And then I'm going to have a version that's like good with my hair and then uh, of each probably, and then I'm done. Like <laughs> I don't need a whole collection of things anymore because yeah. I don't have to keep testing. And also there are times when I've, and I still, I buy things and you can't return them. I, but I test them out if it doesn't work. And I, I'm not going to go, th- I already know I'm not going to go through the effort to, it's just not worth it to me to go through the effort of like putting the scarf on, whatever, you know, Yeah. I just let it go. So I, my closet is substantially less cluttered now. I, I was first of all able to use, figure out what I have that was really going to look awesome on me Yeah. and, and get rid of the stuff that didn't and yeah. just you know, like be at peace with that. That was always kind yeah. of a hard thing for me. It's just, oh, well, maybe I could, you know, if something is, I try now to not bring anything into my closet. That's not an excellent match. Yes. If something's just a good match, then I'm, I'm, I'm usually passing on that. I'll usually let things live in my closet if they're just a good match, but I'm not going to bring something in that's new. Yeah. Um, that, that isn't excellent. So yeah, I've just, it's sort of evolved. And now I really get excited about what, wearing what I have. Yeah all so good yeah I, I just I've gone on a couple of trips lately and packed and I I end up with so many options and it's so much fun it's easy to then to I pick a color palette from it mm-hmm. and I say like um my, my kid decided for me that my favorite color is purple so I wear purple when, when I never did really before but that's fine mm-hmm. I just I find you know I found some good purples yeah. and then I've gone with it so I generally pick something that's in the neighborhood of like brown my skin t- and then brighter and darker and more intense and less and then so that's sort of the the foundation and then I add in some purples so it makes it easier for me to put together a little wardrobe in a carry-on bag yeah when before I would have all these random things and they didn't work together. And I really had a hard time putting together, like I needed my whole closet or I was just, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, w- I was out of luck. Like I was, I was going to end up, you know, wearing stuff that was really awkward um, for most of a trip. So it was, it's been a really pleasant experience um, there too. I can, I can actually narrow down my closet and be pretty pleased with it. Right. And I think that that was one of the most biggest struggles for me. And it still is a little bit, but I have to, you know, I'm starting to get really much better at it is that, you know, over time we collect and we collect and we buy clothes. And before you know it, your closet starts to become cluttered again. And then it's like, you know, you might have clothes from five, six years ago that you probably haven't even worn in ages, but yet you haven't thrown it out or I haven't thrown it out because I'm like, well, you know, it, 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 always, it always comes back in style and, you know, maybe I'll wear it again. Look, it's it's really in good condition. I haven't worn it that much, you know, but then it's lying there and I haven't worn it. And then there are some clothes, like you said, no returns. I bought it. I brought it home. I tried it on. It was a no go, you know, but then I just stuck it in there. I'm like, ah, well, maybe if I lose five pounds, it'll look it on me or, you know, maybe one day I'll wear it. I don't want to throw it out. I just got it, you know, and then or I'll give it away to somebody and you forget that you even had it in the closet, you know, and and then it's like your closet becomes so cluttered, you know, and, you know, so I, I think if you know what colors look good on you, if you know what outfits look good on you, I think you made an excellent point. If it's just a good get rid of it. You know, if it looks excellent, that's what our goal is. Cause how many clothes do we really good? How many outfits will we really wear in a year? You know, think about it because there's always those favorite outfits that we wear over and over again to different things that nobody saw us in yet with, you know, with the group we're going with. So how many outfits do we really wear in a year? I guarantee you it's not as many as we think, you know, so we probably don't need a quarter or more of our closet. Absolutely. There's no question. Now I am one of these people, like my weight fluctuates and mm-hmm. I can go up and down by 20 pounds. Right. You think about, you know, f- first of all, those clothes, if something doesn't fit you, it's not even close to you. It's like artwork. Like it, yeah. it's not helpful. And also it's probably hurtful for you. Yeah. That's one of the first things is like, I have to get the stuff out of my closet that does right. not, or isn't, you know, there's, there's stuff that's just not flattering. Yeah. It's just not flattering. It just because a color works for you doesn't necessarily mean it's flattering. Right. So, you know, just like taking, and also this is a thing I'm also very good at buying, I, like buying clothes for a life I don't have, mm-hmm. you know, buying clothes for doing a lot of black tie events or this or that, you know, like I get, I probably have 12 different pairs or 12 different bathing suits. Like I don't know, maybe I, I might, I might need one like five times a year. So yeah. it, really like a lot of this stuff is, 
it, it's getting understanding what your life is actually like. Yeah. Understanding what size, you know, what size you wear. So those are measurements. Yeah. And then this is another set of measurements that you take on yourself to help optimize the clothes that you're choosing. Right. It doesn't just like, just like when you take your size measurements, sometimes I want things to have a little bit more of an oversized fit. So I adjust course a bit. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Like, but it, it's knowledge is power. Like we're giving you knowledge so that you can then decide what to do with it. Yeah. And it, it's not one size fits all even at this point, but at least you have then, if you're struggling in this space, yeah. Or if you're over consuming, whatever, it gives you a starting point to then say, no, 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 probably for most people you're over consuming because what you're buying doesn't work for you. Right. It's not flattering. So you get it home. And even though it's a beautiful piece, it's not beautiful on you, which yeah. is the only thing that's important in your closet. Right. So allowing for those things to, to pass on to someone else who they might be beautiful on. Yeah. That's the right thing to do in that case. And then to, to get to a point where when you go through your closet, virtually everything in there is going to fit you. It's going to flatter you shape wise. And the color is going to make you just like shine. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody deserves that. Yeah. Everybody deserves that. And if that's not where your closet is, if you have too much or too little, like enough is a, word it means something and it's, it's truly like the sweet spot for a closet yeah oh 100 percent. i agree i i i i love this i think it's awesome the all this all the the whole app itself is great because i you know it's finding the right colors is not an easy task you know and and people you know have a hard time struggling with finding the right colors the right the right things that will really make them really shine and feel good and i love the fact that you could even use it to you know decorate your home too and and find out the right things so many times that i have beautiful pictures that i'm not getting rid of but then I pick out a color for the wall and I've had people repaint my wall because it's like, uh, you know, it looked good when I, when I put it against the wall, but not so much now that the whole wall is painted, you know, and uh, you know, so having a tool like that is really good. It helps you, you know, not, you, you know, it helps you with your clothes. It helps you with your, your accessories. It helps you find the right makeup. It helps you with your nails. It could help you with your, you know, decorating your house and finding the right color schemes. So it's, it's a, it makes life a lot easier and it helps you, you know, so you don't make mistakes and you pick out the things that are really going to be the best for you personally. It's like a personalized app tool, you know, to make you look good, feel good and be in a surrounding that makes you feel good as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that more than anything is just, I think when people feel good about, about themselves, like everything, everything changes. Yeah. And this is, this is not, it doesn't have to be as complicated as people are making it. Yeah. You don't need to hire a really expensive personal stylist here. You don't need to, you know, there are a lot of junky apps that are out there in this space that are, oh. I mean, they don't work. They, they just don't, don't work. work. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on which picture you put on. It depends on what your camera scheme is, you know, the, the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't play in that space. It, it, when you, st when you start doing this from an objective perspective and you're just using like a numerical system, you, you get rid of a lot of the, the noise that's around this yeah. and around the complexity that's, that's always been in this space. Like you need an expert to tell you how to get dressed. Yeah. And that's not true. Like every being dressed and looking good and feeling good, that shouldn't be reserved for a small number of people. Exactly. That, that really should be something that everybody has access to. And I, I hope that, you know, we've priced this appropriately. So most people do have access to this and it's, you know, it's accessible and understandable. Again, that's a huge part of it. When I first came out with this, I was making people do a bunch of math to figure it out. Like here are your numbers. Now here's how you do the math yeah. and like that. So yeah, again, just trying to make this as, as usable and accessible to, to folks as possible, because it really does. I mean, my perspective, it's made a huge difference in my life. Right. And I am one of those people who did struggle in this space and who still, I can eyeball some of it. Yeah. I'm still wrong sometimes. So it, it, it really does make it a lot easier when I can just put the, put this objective, you know, um, sensor down and just say, tell me, does this work for me or not? Yeah. And 
you know, and then just move on with my day. And I don't have to sit there and, and go back and forth and try it on six times. And yeah. then but I can't return it anyway. So. And what I like too, is that, you know, if you are on a tight budget and you don't have the ability to buy big expensive clothes, if you can go somewhere and you can pick the right colors out, you know, that's going to make you shine. There are so many ways and there've been lots of books out there where you can buy clothes for under a hundred dollars and you can buy many outfits for that hundred dollars. If you go to the right places and if you know the right colors, you could really make yourself look, you know, like a hot tamale, you know, and really make yourself look and feel good because, you know, it's not about what the label is. It's about looking at the, at the clothes itself and, and being able to pick the right color and just looking at the material, you know, and, and as long as the material looks good and you got the right color, you can really look like a million bucks for very little money. That is a wonderful point because you really should not, I mean, people get really wrapped up in labels mm -hmm. and the fact that something is a very expensive brand, you know, it is a very fancy brand name does not necessarily mean that the quality is better. And the second thing that it does not mean is that it will look good on you. Right tons of really expensive designer labels out there that, and the clothes are not going to be flattering on just about anyone. Right. And so that's, it's just really something to keep in mind that you cannot buy yeah. um, this just because you spend a lot of money does not mean that you will look good in the clothes. You can go into a very inexpensive store yeah. and buy things that are customized to you that look good, you know, that fit you, that flatter from a cut perspective and that flatter from a color perspective. And yes. you look a hundred times better than if you buy some crazy designer yeah. you know, that they've made into crazy colors or crazy fit or whatever, so that they can set themselves apart. And you can tell that that's a whatever piece, yeah. right? It's not necessarily what looks good and what's going to flatter you as a person. So really, I think you you are exactly right. You look at the the fabric content, you look at the the cut of it, you look at the color and the size. Those are the things that are going to determine whether or not that piece makes you look like a million dollars, not you spending a million dollars on yes. it. Uh, th those things don't necessarily correlate. A hundred percent. You know, and I, I think that, you know, people have to really get that through their head because a lot of people, they just, they, they go by names and brands and they try to show off by that. But there have been times where I've put on clothes and they were by fancy designers and they had these crazy ruffles on them. And, you know, my husband just looked at me and he was like, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, so-and-so made it, you know, it's in style. He's like, not for you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, and, and I'm, I got to tell you, I found my best deal sometimes, you know, and I, I have been able to buy clothes that are really nice and I got a lot for my money and just, you know, buying at the right times, buying, you know, just knowing how to shop and knowing what type of, like we said, what type of materials, what type of colors, what type of cut looks best. You know, there are certain cuts that make me look like a million dollars and there are certain cuts that make me look like a big box, you know, and, and you know, and you have to just find out what's right for your body type, you know, and those are, you know, important factors. Now, if we had to take today's conversation and we had to wrap it up and you really wanted to, you know, emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize today? I think number one is that color, you shouldn't overlook color when you're trying to, when, when you're getting dressed and when you're thinking about what you purchase and what you keep. Mm -hmm. Color is just like, just like um, size. It, it should be a, a consideration that goes in into whether or not something is a part of your closet or not. It should be a primary consideration. And I think just the importance of finding the right colors for you and what that can do for your life. Right. Yeah, my story about finding a good color for me and just how much different I felt in my own skin when that happened. Right. So, you know, I, I think people, if they've not found it yet or they've not found colors that make them feel like that, keep looking, right? Keep looking because there, there, there are colors out there that are going to make you feel like your skin is glowing, that make you feel good about yourself um, and, and your appearance. So I, I would say that those are a couple of things. Um, 
it, I think you, your last point there was, was excellent. It's just like, you can't buy, you, you can't buy this um, in the same, like you, you can't take the price tag of something and immediately move that over and, and try to, and try to say that that means that you're going to look good in a piece. I think there, the, the factors that are important when you're buying clothes have to be much, much more customized and personalized to you. Mm -hmm. And that is how you build out a wardrobe. There aren't shortcuts here. When, when you see the, the 10 item, the, the 10 items that everyone must have in their wardrobe, you take that very, very loosely because mm -hmm. those might be helpful depending on what your lifestyle is like yeah. and depending on what your body is like yeah. and depending on what your coloration is like. Right. So you really have to put some thought to get the closet of your dreams. You can't just outsource it. You really do need to, to put some thought into this or, you know, like there are ways that you can make that process go more smoothly, that, that it's easier, yeah. but it's really difficult just from my experience i found it extremely difficult to outsource that to even a very very expensive personal stylist right they will never understand mm -hmm. they will never understand what truly what your life is like and right. how you want to live and and you know the clothes that you want to wear and then it's also like at least the way that industry is currently run right. there are a lot of incentives there and the knowledge that that maybe you you could probably do better if you right. put in um, some time and energy and effort into into just making sure that you know you get up every morning and it's just easy. Yes, it's something that works for you. Exactly. Now, before we go, just remind everybody where they can find your app. Sure, absolutely. So you can go, like I said, it's Walmart. Um, you can go to Amazon. It's C O L Y R, or you can type color analysis, and we should show up. Uh, you can find us on uh, findmycolors.com. That is the website. Uh, I am on I am on uh, Instagram, and that's at Style for Substance. And I would love to hear from anybody. If if you want to send me a note directly, um, it's uh, Susan at colorbyyournumbers.com. So I'd be happy to to answer any questions that anyone has as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan, for coming on the show. I wish you good luck with your app. And this sounds amazing. I'm actually really excited to try it. This is, it sounds like an amazing tool. And I think a lot of women and even a lot of men will enjoy this app com completely. Thank you so much, Stacey. I've had a really good time. Oh, me too. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.